In the sunny state of Florida, connection and chemistry are brewing. I like the laugh. Yeah, it's good. Hi, you want to hold hands? How are you? Sure, sure. You've got beautiful eyes. This is speed dating for the senior set. I'm 78. Holy Holy I'm still young enough to have sex, so I want that. That has to be one of the things that I have to have. Every day of the week? Every day of the week. Just because these men and women are over 65 doesn't mean they're out of the game. The first guy, he wanted to know if I could cook, right? The next guy wanted to know if I could clean, right? And the third guy wanted to know whether or not I Oh, my God. Are you kidding? And that's the guy you like? And that was the guy I like. Oh, my God. <laughs> How do we make the most of our twilight years? We're living longer than ever before. Americans 85 and up are the fastest growing population in the country. My own father, Doug, is 75. Physically, he seems to have decades ahead, but his mind is beginning to show signs of decline, and it's worrying me. What did you do all weekend? I don't remember, to tell you the truth. To help my dad prepare for his future, I'm on a personal journey to look at the many ways America's seniors and their loved ones cope with aging. Some rely on a partner or love. He makes me feel like I'm 16 years old. Others count on family when they can't take care of themselves. I'm not the mother anymore. She's like the mother. And a rare few do it all on their own. I don't want nobody helping me do nothing if I can do it myself. I can't let nothing keep me down. Tonight, we explore how it feels to grow old in America, a topic many prefer to ignore. But with the average life expectancy at 78 years old, how can we? America, it can be inspiring and beautiful. It can also be dark and ugly. It's so many things but it's ours. It's our America. None of us want to grow old, but it's inevitable. It's something I never wanted to think about, but now I have to. My sister Laura and I are on our way to Sacramento, home to our 75-year-old father, Doug, whose recent memory loss is jeopardizing his safety. He's left the stove on and he's almost flooded his house. We kind of have to look at it like he, he is the child and we might have to step in. In the four bedroom house we grew up in, our father lives all alone, doing what he loves most. I like to do nothing. I mean, just sit, do nothing. I just go day to day. I guess maybe when I was young, I worked so many years. Now I just want to kick back, and I'm satisfied. For 29 years, our father was a civilian technician for an Air Force base, working around the clock and up the ranks from assistant to supervisor. Now he's retired and has a new routine. My dad is the most set in his ways guy. I know he likes to fish, and he likes to sit around and watch TV and go have beers with his buddies. I mean, that is my dad's world. He is healthy physically, but he doesn't do anything to really stimulate his mind. Hi, Hi Dad. Dad. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. How are you doing? Hi, Good. Poppy. What up? <laughs> the house looks pretty good. Yeah, the house looks pretty nice. You guys are have lying you, to me. Have you been, no, it looks pretty good. Have you cleaned it? You know I have. <laughs> Ordinarily, when we drop in and visit our dad, it is in utter disarray. He's living in this house by himself, and it just really concerns us. Daddy, what are we going to do about your taxes? What about it? Wait a minute. I'll call my tax man today. Tomorrow. Lisa, this thing that's over 30 days due is from 2011. Dad, what? that's almost a year ago. Why do you still have this? I don't know. 
What are you doing when the mail comes? You're just throwing it on the table? Yep. What else do I do with it? Bills and taxes, practical matters that my father is starting to let slide. But even more alarming is the toll his memory loss could take on his health. Come on, Daddy, let's go, let's do your pills right now, okay? His doctor has prescribed him medication, one is for his heart, and then other pills and vitamins and supplements that are supposed to help his memory. The problem is that oftentimes he forgets to take his pills. What are you guys doing? I'm cutting your pills. Cutting your pills. No, you don't have to cut the pills. I just take one pill in the morning, that's it. No, you're just, just supposed to take one. half a day, Dad. Well. If the half is good, one is even better. That's the American way. Daddy, these are all set up for you, so no more excuses for not taking them, okay? Daddy, you know that we're just doing this because we love you and we care about you. They always worry about me, you know? They worry about my diet, oh, my medication, you know, my uh, mental condition. There's nothing to worry about. What is there to worry about, you know? But we do worry. We didn't always have to. As far back as I can remember, our dad has been a steady and reliable presence in our lives. Were you happy that you had girls? Or you secretly wanted a boy? <laughs> sure, I was glad. <laughs> when I was just seven, my parents divorced. We spent the school year with our dad and the summers with our mother. Look at how handsome you used to be, Dad. Used to be, huh? Remember when you shaved your mustache? Yeah. <laughs> we freaked out because we didn't recognize him. My dad took on so much responsibility. Yeah. He was just constantly working because I think he had a lot of pressure on him to take care of these two girls. Mm. See, you remember the location of most of these photos. Yeah. You just can't remember what you did yesterday. I don't even remember what happened this morning. When I was young, I saw my parents as never aging as invincible. So to witness my father becoming more and more helpless is hard. His doctor says he has early signs of dementia, and my sister and I can't help but think about what could come, what needs to be done, even if it means bringing him into our own homes. Honestly, you know, we would love for you to move down to LA. No, don't even talk about it. I like Northern California, I like the water, I like the woods, I like the hills. I can jump in my car and go to the pub. Dad, if you're happy here, we want you to be here. Yeah, I'm happy here. But... No way I'm gonna go down south. Now, would you feel comfortable living in another place in Sacramento? Oh, yeah. How? Okay. What? We, we want to take you to a place to just check out tomorrow. Like a senior retirement community. Just to see Waiting what... for me to check out, that's what no, you're no, doing. No, 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 no. You could live in a place where you still have a lot of freedom. They have apartments. Let's just look at this place tomorrow just to see what you think. If you hate it, then we never have to go back there again, okay? We'll just check it out. You might like it, you know? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Though he's agreed to look, we know our father is hesitant. A lot of mostly negative things come to mind when he and others think about retirement communities. Right to right, left to left. And pull back, breathe out, switch. But in South Florida, I visit one where a group of seniors are getting a refresher course in something unexpected. So, everybody's here about talking about sex, right? So we're gonna talk about penises. Always get some giggles, you see? We're gonna talk about vaginas. <laughs> yes, she said it. Uh-oh, she said the word, vagina. But yet when you start- Sexy seniors, sex, who knew? It's clear that many over 65 are finding the golden years to be a new beginning. And we're gonna talk about lots of other things, so everybody buckle up, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Sex is a healthy part of life. Is sexy just for people who are 20 years old and in magazines and in movies? Can somebody of any age be sexy? Yes. In a community in southeastern Florida, 
a group of seniors are showing me that just because you're over 65, life's greatest pleasures don't have to end. This is their sex ed class, and I'm quickly learning that they're just as active as the rest of us. But just how straightforward they are takes me by surprise. I run a singles meeting. I try to teach men that your hands are miracle workers. Your hands can do a lot to excite a woman in many ways. And they don't know this. Ladies, you want his number? <laughs> I'd like to have your two thoughts on a threesome. My two thoughts on a threesome. If it's consensual and you all want to be there, nothing wrong with it. Yes. You haven't mentioned anything about anal sex. Anal sex. Extra virgin olive oil, there you go. Okay, men can use vibrators as well. Can you get by the security at the airport? Yes, you can get by security at the airport, yes. Everybody's reading Fifty Shades of Grey? 85% of Americans over 60 have at least one sexual experience a week. And like the rest of us, their actions come with risks. Most quickly rising population in this country of people who are contracting the HIV virus are over the age of 60. No one's getting pregnant, right? So I don't have to use a condom. It doesn't occur to you that you might actually catch a disease. You can still have a sex life but you have to just take precautions. But many in this community are looking for more than just tips for a healthy sex life. They're looking for love. In weekly speed dating sessions, 20 seniors enjoy each other's company seven minutes at a time. Gentlemen, it's time to go to the next table, please. And uh, meet a new friend. And what are you looking for? A genuine person. What you see is what you get. I am what I am. <laughs> I told you. I could see that. I mean, why bother? Right. You can, you know, it's going to come back and bite you in the tuchus. Here, wrinkles, missing teeth, and aching bones are shared by all, and time isn't wasted on small talk. I was living with a gentleman for 10 years, and we separated last year. What happened? It's a long story. Oh, it's a long story. Uh, yeah. You know, you're a nice guy, and you have a great sense of humor. What's wrong with you? you got a fantastic sense of humor. I have a great sense of humor. I could, I could look at death and laugh it in the eye. Laugh it right in the eye. Though women live longer and outnumber men in the twilight years, the chance of finding a partner isn't out of the question. Oh, my gosh. Really chilly. You want tea? Please, I'm freezing. Just nine months ago, 79-year-old Helen and 80-year-old Jacob met through speed dating. In their seven short minutes, the sparks flew and a serious, steady relationship began. Together, that's Jacob's favorite word. We do everything together. Everything what I like, she like it too. Did you put sugar in yours? So you met speed dating. Yeah, I spotted Jacob and I said, oh my God, I don't believe that a person who looks like that is here. I see Helen, she's smiling. I see this woman, this is the one what I want. So you had this instant attraction to oh, one yeah. another? Yeah, I thought he was the most adorable thing I ever saw. This isn't Helen's first romance. For most of her youth, love evaded her. She experienced her first real relationship at 40. It lasted 33 years until his death. Then, at 74, she finally married. But he, too, passed on just a few years later. In my first relationship, I had security. In my second relationship, I had romance. And in this uh, relationship, there's a lot of passion. Passion? Yeah. Like, how would you define passion? Ellen, I can kiss her in the kitchen. I can kiss her in the bed. I can kiss her in the shower. I want to hug her all the time. He's the best. It's intimate and it's excellent. Did you ever expect no. that <laughs> you'd never, experience this never at 79? Because, because I never had uh, 
that in the past, ever. Not like this. He makes me feel like I'm 16 years old. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a teenager, yeah, starting out. For Jacob, divorced for 33 years, Helen is the missing piece he'd been looking for. Originally from Israel, he moved to Florida 10 years ago and has been hoping to find a life partner, but hasn't had the chemistry until now. Ellen, when I hold, I find something special. I'm definitely completed close to her. After nine months of unexpected passion and bliss, Helen and Jacob have decided to make their union official. Today, they're getting married. I ended up with the dress that he picked the first Isn't time. That's great. He has a good eye. Uh-huh. Well, he picked you. I don't know how it happens with other people when they know it's the right thing, but we just know. It doesn't change with age. You just know when it's right. For Helen, who never had children, and for Jacob, whose children live far away, today marks the beginning of a future in which they can care for each other. We all pray God will bless you with years of good health and of deep happiness. And Jacob has always said he will take care of me. We just have to pray that we stay healthy so that we can continue enjoying each other. Together, the two have increased their odds. Studies show that their love and passion may actually help the couple avoid illness and live longer. You, Jacob, and you, Helen, are now husband and wife. Mazel tov, mazel tov. You may kiss the bride, kiss the bride. Helen has discovered a whole new chapter of her life something she never imagined was possible when she moved to this community eight years ago. It's what we hope our father could open his mind to. There's no coroner here, Dad. No, they just throw you in the back and just throw you in the incinerator. <laughs> just check it out and see what you think, OK? You yeah. might actually like it. Our father has agreed to look at an independent retirement community to see what it can offer. Nearly 4,000 of these senior residences have cropped up over the past few decades. On average, they cost about $3,000 a month. So we're gonna come down here and the first spot that I'm gonna show you is our activity room. And this is where we have all of our happy hours. And we happy also- Happy hours, Dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crack a smile. We have live entertainment here every Wednesday. The guys will come down here and watch on the big screen any kind of sports shows or golf games that are going on. That would be a fun place for you to come hang out and meet new people. So you have one bedrooms, two bedrooms. And, and studios. And studios, okay. Exactly. And just here, along with wine tasting and bingo, my father could call on a caregiver and live in his own place, complete with housekeeping and maintenance. This is a perfect example of what patio living can be like. The bedroom is right in here. Again, a nice, very spacious room. This is a queen-size bed, so you get a feeling for... Spacious. Size. Really? Yeah. Bathroom, a lot bigger than your yeah. bathroom. Yeah. We have weekly housekeeping, so there would be a housekeeper that would be assigned to your apartment. Uh -huh. You would get to know her very well. You're assigned a, a covered parking space outside, and there's also additional storage in terms of garages out there if you have extra items that you need to keep. Convenient. Yeah, I mean, so you could have your car here, yeah. but you can also walk to a lot of things as yeah. well. So you don't have to drive all the time. This would be no different than living in an apartment somewhere yeah. else. You know, it's, it's yeah. almost exactly the same, but if you want to have these services, they exist, they're right outside the door. Yeah. Or if you don't want to utilize them, you just stay inside and watch TV here, you get in your car and you go and hang out with your friends, you know? During the winter, we have the fire going all day, so that's a really nice place. A lot of our residents will sit down there and, and enjoy the fire. It's nice. It is very nice. All right, Dad, you want to go on in? We always keep in the, in the elevators what's going on each day so that you'll know that when everything is. And you can see our July happy hours are all lined up. You like bingo, don't you, Dad? 
Pokina. No. <laughs> Whoops. All righty. So we're going to come out this way right over here to your right. We also have a puzzle and game room in there. This is like the central hub of where they all find out what's going on every day. You want to go to see the dining room, Dad? Of course. <laughs> so, come on in. Everybody has a good time in here. This is the social hour right now. As we tour the dining area, we unexpectedly run into a current resident, an old friend who used to live in my dad's neighborhood. Hey, hey good looking guy. How's it going? Good. Where have you been good hiding? Right here. <laughs> they won't let you out, huh? <laughs> How long have you been living here? About four months. How has it been? I love it here. Yeah? What do you love about it? I have a nice, beautiful apartment. I'm waited on hand and foot. They feed me. There's all kinds of activities all day long, every day. Mmm. Won't have time mm. to nap then. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see you. It's good seeing you. I'll catch you again. Come and see me. Yeah. Bye. Now I know where you're at. The potential for friendship, along with independence here, gives me a bit of hope. Perhaps my dad has seen what I have. So, Dad, what do you think of the place? It's nice. Could you see yourself living no. there? Why? Too plain, too neat. Like an institution. You mean the, the idea of easy living doesn't appeal to you? No. There are a lot of activities there. Yeah. Could you see yourself doing any of those things? Do they seem fun? I'm not going to go up there and sing songs, crying out loud. Right now, I'm happy where I'm at. I can empathize with my father's resistance to change. It's scary and unsettling. But with his memory on the decline, his safety is at risk. Now that he's rejected the retirement home, where does that leave us in our quest to keep him safe? My sister Laura and I are at a loss about how to care for our father, who's showing early signs of dementia. We can't force him to move to LA. We can't force him to move into a retirement community. I mean, he is completely defiant about being on his own. I mean, I get why he wants to just stay here. He has a whole life here. He's content and happy with what he knows. With the retirement home we toured behind us, my dad is now back in his own neighborhood. Morning, Doug. Welcome. Thank you. Take your glasses you. off. Glad to show it up today. He's back to his usual routine, a life of freedom and spontaneous drop-ins at his local coffee joint. Hey, Clyde, I spilled my coffee. Huh? I spilled my coffee. That's why we don't sit across from you. Yeah. No, he dribbled the other day. He dribbled. How's that? Your T-shirt. Yeah. I have some great friends here. You know, it's not that easy to make good friends. All these guys, I know them. We call each other names. And, you know, it's, it's just my old buddies. And you can't find them anywhere. This is what my father knows. For him, the idea of uprooting and leaving behind his lifelong friends is an impossible notion. And part of the way a star dies is that it becomes a red giant. He remains resistant to change and is even unwilling to let us hire someone to check in on him regularly. But without that supervision, the life my father loves could become unsustainable as he ages. Across the country in New York, I'm about to meet a woman who has found that tenuous balance, someone who has managed to maintain independence but allowed others to help when it mattered most. Ida is 97 years old and navigating the twilight years with a rare grace. I'm over the hill, and I'm picking up speed, and I want to stay in the speed line. I think I can make it to 108. I really feel that way. She's a great, great, great grandmother closing in on a century and completely self-sufficient. I wash, cook, iron, scrub, clean, mop, and shop. I don't want nobody helping me do nothing if I can do it myself. You're 97 years old. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel? 39. <laughs> <laughs> you really feel 39? I feel better and younger now. I just feel free. 
Uh, you know, I could go do what I wanted to do and go where I wanted to go. Though Ida lives in solitude in a small studio, she's far from alone in the world. Her 60-year-old daughter, Shelley, lives nearby and keeps tabs on her independent mother when she can. Hi, Mom. <laughs> How you doing? Good. How you doing? OK. Good. OK. I think so, I'll survive. OK. She's 84 pounds, and I think she's now 4'6 or, or something. But she's a powerful package. She's uh, a powerful image. And she is not only powerful, she is uh, empowered. Ida is the ideal of what we all hope to eventually be, free, unencumbered by our years. But it wasn't always this way. As a mother of four in the projects of New York City, Ida struggled. Mom's toughest years were her earliest years. My father died when I was seven, so mom was raising us by herself. Money was very tight, and there were big lessons that we had to learn, and it was learn them or, or die. This life of hardship took its greatest toll when both of Ida's sons, former veterans, were killed in drug-related incidents within three years of each other. For Ida, the loss of her boys at 65 was devastating. I felt like the whole world fell apart. One was almost 40, the other one was almost 42 when they got killed. I could feel myself going lower and lower. I didn't even want to be here. I said, well, they're gone and all this, all this uh, effort and the energy and all the love and all that that you have for your children, that's gone. I don't even like to think about it, talk about it. It's so hurtful. Mother tried to keep a good face around us, but the depth um, of her sorrow was so obvious to me. Uh, it was extremely profound. It was then that Shelley, a part-time high school track coach, tried something extreme to bring her mother out of the darkness. She got her to run. People said to me, what did you do? You took your mother, 67 years old, and you put her in a 3.1 mile race she had never raced before? And I said, yes, uh, that is what I did. Her race is what saved me. My mind was clear, and I felt just a different feeling, like I had come out of a shell. So from then on, it was on. For the past three decades, Ida has made training and racing her life, breaking numerous records for her age group. Now she wants another personal best, a new record for the 100-meter dash. Side, side. And race four, day is five, just around six, the corner. Good, 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 and lunch. I've been invited good. to join in on Together. one of their pre-race training right. sessions. Get those arms ready, and here we go. Short step, Lisa. Ah, move. Ba, 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 and five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and ten. Good girl. OK, that's a good job. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you tough on your mom? As tough as she was on me. <laughs> What's it like to have your daughter as your trainer? It's beautiful. At least there's a relation. So if I'm a little cranky, she knows <laughs> she's doing too much. <laughs> Did you ever imagine your mother would be setting records in her 90s? Never. I never, ever <laughs> thought of it. You know, the idea that at 97, she's goal setting, it's unusual. She shows us that it can be done. That's better. Perhaps That's the key to Ida's longevity is this very passion. Seniors who stay active live longer lives with fewer disabilities. Good. You're not even out of breath at all. <sighs> Just a little. I don't have much body, so it's not much breath. <laughs> Tomorrow is the big day, where Ida will be running to beat the 100-meter record, racing against the odds of aging and time. Ida has been training for weeks for the 100 meter dash. But she's still 97, and crossing a finish line is not as simple as it once was. These days, she faces the occasional road bump with her blood pressure. 
And today is one of those days. 185 over 77. It's still up. I don't know what to think. This is weird. Hello. Yes. Ida calls on her coach and daughter Shelly for advice. Yesterday was too low, now today is too high. Well, I got my feet up, I got the ice back on my head, I'm a seat. I am always concerned. The fragility of her body does not escape me. So I'm always watching. Sometimes, before I run, I feel like maybe, maybe I'm too tired. Maybe I didn't get enough rest. But after Ida takes her blood pressure medication, she quickly normalizes and by afternoon is ready to race. The way Ida feels will have to last her through the day if she's going to have any chance of breaking the record. She's running in an open event. Most of the runners are in their 20s. I can't do that. <laughs> Though she is the oldest and will perhaps be the slowest, all that matters is her time for her age group, 95 and up. Right here. You're going to be all the way in lane one. That's the inside lane. On your mark, set, and then, and then the gun. Lane. This is your lane. You see, you're going to go straight. And then there's the finish right there. OK, I'm going to run up there now. So what's the record that your mom is trying to beat? It's 59.9. 59.9, so we're gonna be watching that clock. 59.9, okay. Right. How's she feeling today? She says she feels good. So this is it? This is it. It's roasting hot out in New York, and I'm about to watch a 97-year-old woman not just run the 100-meter sprint, but try and break a record. Crazy. Sad. When she races, that 100 meters, it feels like a lifetime. Is she going to make the time? Is she going to start to feel tired? All kind of things go through your head. Yep. Go, girl, go. You can make it. Come on. Right here. It's right here. Come on. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. All the way. Come on. All in. All the way. Yeah. <laughs> Ah. Guess what? She ran it. She got the record. She did. She's you not going to get. Record. You got. You ran 51. Wow. You broke the record. Yeah. 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 To celebrate Ida's new running record and her 97th birthday, Shelley has arranged for her friends and family to gather. And look, I've got my running I picture. Know, I oh, said. my medal. Who is oh, that in that picture? If I die tonight, I die. Right. Oh. The spirit of my mother is contagious. Mother is living proof that while perhaps not all things are possible, that many things are possible. These are the best years of my life. The twilight years are the best for me. Can nothing keep me down. If I can find a way up, they'll have to sit on me. Happy birthday to you. This is what we all want for our parents. That kind of vigor, that joy, up until the very end. But sometimes life deals a very different hand, and the love and support of family becomes not just important, but critical. OK, lift you up. <clears throat> Two and a half years ago, 88-year-old Juanita had a stroke. Unable to care for herself, she moved in with her daughter, Sue. My life was good. I had my own place. I had my own car. I played golf. I played tennis. And then my whole life changed. Do you want some lotion on your hands, too? Yes, dear. We think we'll stay young forever, but in just an instant, everything can change. What does it look like when a person leaves their former life behind and an adult child becomes the parent? 
nearly 10 million adult children are caring for their aging parents today, a number that has tripled over the past 15 years. Okay, Mom, do you want oatmeal this morning or cereal? Cereal. Okay, get it for you and I... Oh, did, did you make my toast? Yeah, your toast is... In a Missouri suburb, 57-year-old Sue okay. is one of them. And... Two and a half years ago, a massive stroke left her mother, Juanita, paralyzed on her left side. She's now confined to a wheelchair and needs around-the-clock supervision. When you envision your life after your kids are grown, you envision you and your husband going on trips and meeting with friends, and we don't have any of that. It takes a big toll on me physically and mentally and emotionally by just not having any private time, always being on call. Juanita's husband passed away almost 30 years ago. Once Juanita became disabled, Sue and her two siblings only had a few options, a nursing facility or in-home full-time care. My husband and I had the home for it. My other two siblings didn't. I'm the most fit, I'm the youngest. I didn't work full-time, I had a lot more flexibility. And I knew that if I didn't bring her, I would regret it the rest of my life. Hey, Sue. Can I go to the bathroom, please? I'll be right there, Mom. I'm coming. Sue's choice freed her from feelings of regret or guilt. But for Juanita, the experience of becoming a dependent has proven the opposite. I just feel like I'm interfering with everybody's life. I don't like to be a burden. Can you lift your arm? It's very sore, but I can do it. I get frustrated because there's so many things I can't do. And I can't give myself a bath. It would be so bad if I could go to the bathroom by myself, but I can't do that. Step back. Oh, OK, OK, I got you. I'm not the mother anymore. She's like the mother. And that's not right. And it breaks my heart. OK. Get your teeth brushed, Mom. It took a long time for me to realize that the mother that I knew died with the stroke and that I've had to develop a new and different relationship and that it's not going to be the same. Now, do you want sugar in it, too? Sure. Okay. That sugar That's sugar. That's sugar. I still want to hold on to the 50 plus years of great memories and realize that this is just a blip on the radar screen. No, 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 you ruined it. <laughs> but when I look at old pictures or when I look at videos, it's very emotional because I remember who she was. Okay. What is that? Sprinkles. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. It's just so hard because now I miss her. I miss my mom. And I'm not poor. To relieve the pressure of constant caretaking, Sue's found a way for the two of them to have some time on their own. Nearly every day, she takes Juanita to the local senior center for a few hours. It's good for her to separate herself from this house and from me on a daily basis. OK, get your arm up, Mom. Get your arm. Are you OK there? Listen, I'm going. I love you. I'll see you later. OK. My days have been very good since I started going to the club, because it's actually been and it's with a group of people that like to be active. Are you winning, Helen? Well, I don't know uh, yet. I like the idea that these people come out and, and see each other. It gives me a good feeling about myself. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> While Juanita enjoys these few hours of independence, Sue takes time to care for herself. We each have something that's our own. 
and that's an important piece. If someone is going to be caring for their parents and have them in their home, that they find those pieces that are theirs and they protect them. Well, how was your day today? How'd it go today? Well, we're fine. There were not very many people there. At the club? Yeah. Oh, OK. John, Sue's husband of 31 years, works full-time as a manager at a power company to support the family. While he can't help during the day, he's there every evening to lend a hand. You don't do the dishes, you can. I think it's a responsibility to take care of your parents as much as you can. And to me and to Sue both, family's first over and above everything else. Ready to go to the bathroom? Yes, I want to get something. Well, wouldn't hurt. Yes, I am. Watching the decline of a parent can be painful, but it's something most of us will face at some point. My dad is still functioning, but I've seen how quickly it can all change. He's already forgetting things on a regular basis and getting lost. Leaving things as they are just isn't an option. Great, I just wanted to inquire about your services. Right, so I'm looking into a local caregiver service, a way for him to stay autonomous but still be cared for. He would be offended by the idea that someone needs to come in and take care of him. But sure. if there's someone who can become like a friend or a buddy to hang out with him, I think that that might be the only way to sell him on this. I mean, I've probably visited with 4,000 families over the years, and I've never had a senior yet say, boy, I can't wait to have a stranger come by and you know, make me a sandwich next week or help me take a bath. It's, it's very normal. That resistance is, is very healthy. And usually, once you get that foot in the door, they make a connection, and it, it, it works about 95% of the time really well. But really, it's interesting, Lisa, it's some of the most missed medicine, in my opinion. I've seen people getting every physical need met, and until they kind of connected with another person who could care about them in lieu of family, they were kind of struggling. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Let me discuss this with my father and see if he'd even be open to an initial meeting, and I will be in touch. I mean, it sounds like you do, do everything that, that, that we're looking for. My hope is my father will consider this idea, at least for us, if not for himself. My biggest fear is that I would call him and he's not gonna answer the phone. And I'm gonna keep calling him and he's just not gonna answer the phone. Cause something happened to him, you know? That no one's there with him. I just don't want that to happen. I've learned a lot over the past few weeks. Each of the seniors I met, though at a similar stage of life, are in very different situations. But each has taught me something unique about what might be best for my father. Newlyweds Helen and Jacob have proven to me that the twilight years can be a new beginning. And theirs starts with a 21-day honeymoon in Paris. Whatever time I have left, I want to enjoy it. Just to be together and be happy, doing all the things that we want to do. I don't ask for anything more than happiness, good health, and good times. OK. I think we're all set to go. Sue and Juanita have shown me that things can happen at any moment, and my family needs to be prepared for whatever life brings us. I'm going to keep taking care of her. I'm going to make sure she's as happy as she can be. Can we get your socks on? Oh, they're gorgeous. I, yes, the socks are gorgeous. I want her to find the joy and the happiness within the constraints of your life that you have now. Thank you, you have a, Thanks, too. Good night, Mom. I love you. I love you, too. OK. You have a good night's sleep. I think you have a good time. <laughs> OK. Good night, Mom. Good night. I'm very fortunate. They do all these things that other people wouldn't do. I'm very, very lucky that way. Easy. Open palms out. And then there's Ida. Okay, 
whose life and actions make clear that I must respect the independence my father values so much. You got to keep pushing yourself forward. If you feel you can do it, do it. That's the thing about aging. It's not the age, it's just what you do with the age. So dad, when we were little, how often would you make these? Maybe about once a month or twice a month. That's a lot. As I take these lessons in and apply them to my own family, we finally make progress. And can you make me make them please? Sure, honey. We've brought my father to LA for a visit. And after working on him for days, he's finally given in and will let us hire someone to look in on him. Okay, you got your step stool. Pull away. For now, that will have to suffice. Slow. Fold it like this? Yeah, you got it. And with more frequent visits to LA, we can gauge his health and soak up every bit of the man that makes our father our father. Lee, are you excited to eat Grandpa's famous wonton dumplings? Yes. yes. Tell the truth. At the end of our journey, my sister Laura and I have learned to go into this final stage of life with our eyes wide open, to not fear it, but to accept it, and to enjoy the time we have together. Oh, Dad, I saw something jump over there. Yeah, my lure. <laughs> Just my luck, I'll catch a fish. And you enjoying this nice breeze? So nice. Isn't that nice?